Hello folks, welcome back to Wolong, The Fallen Dynasty, I'm the Mysterious GG. This is the most Irish of all Irish set games. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, last time, unless there was a whole video of messing around with side quests that I'm not remembering, last time, oh, what is marked on the map over, oh, it's the, uh, blacksmith. Last time we defeated Lu Boo, no, we didn't defeat Lu Boo. That was a whole plot mission ago, JJ. Last time, we defeated La Yan Liang and Wen Cho it, because it. I thought the game was building up to us beating Lu Bu, but then it turns out it was building up to us beating Yuan Shao. But now, Sun Xuan has been taken over by evil stuff, or at least Sun Tzu's dead. But um, our hero was fighting along with Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, and at various times, other companions as well. Uh, it was Gu Jia that I gave him as a, as a partner. Uh, but anyway, no, he was fighting his way, trying to get to Yuan Shao, who has abandoned all virtue to lead an army of demons. But um, instead, uh, Yuan, like we caught Yuan Shao, and he's like, aha! And infected Liu Bei with demon juice, and Liu Bei turned into a demon. But we defeated Liu Bei and brought him back to normal. But while that was happening, Sun Tzu was being murdered by the Taoist in black, who, as it turns out, is. Uh, I forget his name, but he's the guy in the novel who kills Sun Tzu. Um, I wonder if any of this is actually covered in. Uh, Tutorial character director. Here we go. Upon returning to a village of protagonist, Hong Jing seeks guidance found in an ultimate elixir. Hong Jing rang death. Hong Jing tried to attack down Liu Bu. Huh? I guess there's more to be found. The blood he had shed was for no one but his family. Recollecting the mellow memories of her brother, Hong Jing broke down in tears, holding the now bladed mask in her arms. So Hong Jing is Yao Chan, right? I mean, they're... Reason to believe that her... Da -da -da. She took on the alias Yao Chan. I just want to confirm that. So the blindfolded boy we haven't heard about in a while. Tax is able to return to life. <laughs> I've realized that the divine base Ying Long was the key to protecting the elixir. The Taos in black had turned it into Xi Long to aid him in achieving his Oh wait a second. Word spread of the Taos in black appearing across the land atop Xi Long and Luo Yang, the demonic key that flowed through the city, was used to create elixir and summon Chao Ti. Have realized that the divine base Ying Long was the key to perfecting the elixir, the Taoist in black that turned it into Xi Long to aid him in achieving his quest for eternal life. Xi Long and the protagonist. Thanks to the remaining power left in the boy's jade, the protagonist was able to return to life. Yeah, what does this have to do with the. The blindfolded boy is obviously going to come back in the story at some point, but whatever. I think maybe reading about him is, would be explaining the story, because I'm lost what's going on with him. But the Taoist in black, his true name has been revealed, isn't it? He's, uh, Yuji. No, Yuji had him shot with elixir laced arrows. Yeah, he's Yuji. Yuji is the... Now identified as Yuji. So Yuji is the Taoist in black. Taoist in black, however you want to pronounce it. He's, uh... Yeah, he's a character in the novel. He only appears in one chapter, but it's a chapter in which this guy appears who's a sorcerer that kills Sun Tzu, so they've decided to make him, you know. I haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of Divine Beasts. Anyway, probably not going to change that now. Let's, uh... Let's go travel. We can get on with the main story or we can do side quests. I don't know if there's how many side quests there are to do. The 
Hearts Optional Battlefield Twilight's Calling, recommended level 100. Decisive Battle at Guandu. So, Behold the Glaive of Righteousness. We just finished, I guess. That's level 79. Decisive Battle at Guandu. It's recommended level 85. The Assault on Wu Chao is recommended level 80. I think that's the one we do next. It looks like it's a little mini level. The Fearless Blade. 84. That screams one-on-one -on -one boss fight with somebody. Let's make our armor shine. Maybe a little mini level too? 84, 80. Let's do the Assault on Wu Chao. An important message from one of the spies stationed among Yuan Chao's ranks has arrived. It states that the bulk of Yuan Chao's army reserves lie in Wu Chao. Determined not to let this chance slip by, Tao Tao has roused his men for a dangerous assault on the storehouse. Yuan Chao's desperate struggle for power must be deterred. Joy, Tao Tao's assault force, but beware, where it has that military supplies are not the only thing cached in Wu Chao. Sure. Um. Yeah, Wu Chao, I'm surprised Zhang He hasn't come up yet. Zhang He was an officer of Yuan Shao's that Yuan Shao treated like crap. He treated a lot of his officers like crap. And, and Zhang He, he's one of these characters, like, I guess there's some passing reference in the novel to him enjoying dance uh, or something like that. Because in, in, in all Koai games, they have, like, Zhang He as this ludicrous, over-the-top, hilarious uh, Japanese take on... Uh, gay men, or at least um, uh, a feet men, uh, but that like they always make him this ridiculous dandy with like butterfly wings and ballet costumes and stuff. Um, and, and there's some line somewhere in the novel about him enjoying dance or something that that is the cause of all that. But it, the actual guy in the novel is like he's one of these characters. He's mentioned like twice over the course of an 8,000 chapter novel, but both times he's mentioned he's fairly important. He's mentioned when, as a guy who's working for Yuan Shao that defects because he's treated like garbage and joins Cao Cao. And then, it's not like he's only mentioned once, but he gets... He's present at the Ma Battle of Mount Dingjun, I guess. Um, where I think he's warning Yu uh, Ji Hao Yuan against some of the dumb shit Ji Hao Yuan does, if I remember right. But he's also, he's referenced specifically late in the novel when um, Zhuge Liang is leading his, like, you know, kind of desperate, failed uh, efforts to uh, attack Wei. Um, Zhang, Zhang He is, like, one of the great threats. Like, he, he goes to great lengths to engineer a plot that will get Zhang He killed. Because Zhang He, other than uh, Suma Yi himself, Zhang He is one of the great threats. Like, one of the competent veteran leaders amongst Wei. So, but, like, I think his joining Cao Cao had something to do with Wu Chao, so I'm kind of... Yeah, I'm wondering if we... we... must move quietly, retain the element supplies, and aim to take them down in one fell strike. Cool beans, buddy. Are you coming with? I guess he is, okay. Because it does, like, it seems like he might be a boss here, or a guy who joins us here. Like, I think his joining has something to do with, like, the burning of the supplies at Wu Chao. Like, I want to say, like, in Dynasty Warriors games, like, there'll often be a mission to take Wu Chao. And if you do, it'll be, like, a big morale, like, because you play as Wei at the Battle of Guandu. And, um... Yeah, that'll be like an optional mission, but if you do it, it has a huge morale uh, negative impact on Yuan Shao's forces. And I think Zhang He may end up defecting to your side if you win at Wu Chao, if I'm remembering the uh, stuff correctly. But let's get another reinforcement. Cao Cao's our sworn brother. We got lots of sworn brothers, and we got lots of pe Like, I got Sun Tzu up to sworn brother before he was brutally taken away from us. Zhang Liao, it's interesting. Zhang Liao is tight with Hong Jing, huh? Hamdingers, of course. Damage reduction upon martial arts. Ji Hao Yuan. Yeah, enemy status effect accumulation plus is a nice one because we like poison. 
One guy, HP recovery upon fatal strike. That's a good one, too. Negative effect of removal. That's, I mean, none of these are bad things to get. Status effect resistance. Restore HP plus. At some point, we need to just go to an earlier mission and dump the item that gives you affinity on Sunjin so we just get his gear, I guess. Let's go with uh, Guojia. Because if nothing else, he's a guy that makes sense would be fighting alongside it is so Sato. good to accompany such excellent talents. It's so good to accompany not only Cao Cao, but the world's finest Cao Cao cosplay. I haven't played this game in a couple of weeks. I'm kind of. I hope I remember the controls. <laughs> the other thing, the other game I need to get a few videos recorded up today is uh, Final Fantasy Origin Chaos: The Spirits Within, whatever the fuck that game is called. Uh, part of the problem with that game being that its uh, controls are close to, but not the same as this one. Look, like it's an action game, so like. You'll think you're doing the same shit and you're really not, and uh, it'll cause you problems. They can creep around all day and not get spotted. Me, not so much. Hold on one second. <coughs> oh, thanks for holding. <laughs> okay. Gonna say, I just have to hope I one hit shot him here because uh, if I do poison whop it to get extra damage in, that will alert him for sure. Alright, so Wu Chao is apparently a crypt in this reality. Quite get off his super attack there, that was handy. But I've been triad 123. Uh, an ally and sworn brother of Fart Knocker 369, or 469, excuse me. 369. What the hell kind of username is Fart Knocker 369? Get it together, JG. You're being ridiculous. Alright, so. This place is pretty po tightly packed with dudes. There's various places there where you wouldn't necessarily have seen the guy coming and he would have ambushed you. Us. All right, so we've just unlocked everybody who is here now. Wow, there are guys all over the place. I should have used arrows to shoot this one archer. Guess I can try to make up for it now. But I think he might be the one who spotted us while I was trying to avoid detection by this guy. Take him out, Gouji. Oh, you had him. Bond has uh, deep strengthened the Guajia by complaining that he wasn't good enough at taking out archers. <laughs> I 
See a guy here I definitely want to take out before he sees me because he's staffing guys. I guess I'm just really happy that uh, he didn't already know I was there. And that this guy, who appeared to be having a conversation with him, but uh, I guess not because he didn't notice. Either, either, maybe he was having a conversation with the assassin guy. I was just kind of politely going, mm -hmm, yeah, sure, all right, yeah, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. I like just really minimally participating in the conversation because uh, the assassin died in the midst of their conversation and he didn't seem to notice. Oh, that's a pretty handy technique. Just... Oh, never mind. He eventually does notice my allies attacking him and respond. <laughs> I was like, okay, get him to keep slowly following me while he's got a damage amplifier applied to him and let my allies, who normally don't do... They're normally most useful, your allies in this game, for distracting your opponents. Not really for doing that much direct damage, but uh, get the damage multiplier applied and uh, that can help a bit. Alright, so this would be a path forward that is not a part of this uh, world. This is a small, uh, miniature, or not a small, miniature, to say, you know, there is a portion of the larger level that is available in this, and, uh, that right there was one of the parts that is not available. Now, wasn't there, uh, I remember there were paths... On this wall, like elevated, I guess they're either we're not in that room yet, or uh, they are not a part of this level either. Similar to this, instead of putting like red demon garbage over them, they're just uh, no, we'll just we'll just have the stone cover that path where there was normally a little opening. I don't see how I'm sneaking up on this guy. They almost always, and that's one thing I like about this game. I understand like. This isn't a battlefield in your mind? Oh. And these assassin guys. Ow. Oh, wow, there's quite a few of them around. It's basically the headdresses that give it away. We got Assassin Bracers plus six, although they've only got one star. Uh, what was I starting to say before? Um, I got distracted by combat. Yeah, I like. I understand that, like, you know, you're never going to be an impressive super pro badass with, like, speedrun records and blah, 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 but, like, I like that this game allows you to creep around, sneaking around, you know, trying to be sneak stalls about it. It, it, it. Although, generally, getting in and just being hyper aggressive with combat is good in this game. Uh, more so than in other Neo games, where like if you just go in, uh, like swinging away, you're going to run out of uh, karma or key or chi or whatever the hell really quickly. Uh, in this game. And you have to be careful, too. You don't want to just be on defense all the time. But there's a balance in Neo where in this game, it's almost always right to just go in and be really aggressive. <laughs> At least against human enemies. I know now the puppers will attack, but... Um, it didn't really get the chance to do anything. Number of Dragon Pot uses... Uh, we're already maxed out. Okay, so I got trick traps, it's all right. Okay, you got him. 
That was the first like serious. They definitely went. They definitely. Maybe I just gotten better at the genre since playing through the Neo games. So this just, it does seem easier. But you know, I messed up and got got spotted and didn't immediately get murdered because there were other targets for them to go after. So the out, like just having anything to distract the enemies from attacking you directly, is huge. Let's go back and because now I can uh, actually take advantage of this. Dragon Cure Pot Use Drop. Here, something to fit of your deeds on the battlefield. Yeah, fantastic. We've taken a crucial point. This battle is as good as ours now. Sure. Well, there's a big old ugly. A big old ugly, ugly enemy. I'm still keeping an eye out for this little side flag. Which, uh, it's nearby, but on a different, different altitude, apparently. I am, I think I am better at the timing of some of those deflects, at least for the enemies that we fought before. Interesting thing about this level, we started with a much higher morale level than usual, and the enemies started out with a higher morale level than usual, too. I've been in these little short levels, they don't want you to spend hours playing through the short levels. But I've been in ones where you start at zero and the enemies start around one or two, but you can cycle around and respawn enemies and spend hours getting up to, like, morale level 25 if you want, but the final boss will be... It'll really trivialize the final boss of the level if its morale level is not that high. And you weren't really meant by design to get up to, like, level 25. But you decide to do it anyway. Oh, hey, is that... And maybe we are on the other side of one of those places that looked like it was just blocked up. I guess they just didn't want to make it a path. Uh, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, but, um... Yeah, and this one, like, by starting you at a high level, like, they can have the, the boss we fight at the end of this level be at a high morale level, too. And it's just a way of making it so that you do gain something by fighting enemies, but you can't completely trivialize the level. By... Trinkets lie dormant in this area. Well, what, you want the rare trinkets to be, like, jumping around and being, you know, active? <laughs> but, um, what the hell am I trying to get to? They could have had this level start with us at zero, and the enemy start at zero, and I, th then I would have the option of grinding up to a higher level of morale than you need. But instead, they're like, no, we're going to make it so there is some reward for fighting enemies along the way, but nothing that will allow you to just completely trivialize the level. That's bullshit. I... I snuck it. I sneak attacked it, but it doesn't matter because, like, compared to some of the other games, like again, I keep talking about Neo. The spiders in Neo could be really nasty. In this game, they pretty much always seem to be uh, complete jobbers. Dragon vein essence increases the recovery effect of the dragon. Yep, that's worth getting. Always worth getting those. Eleven to twelve. Somewhere along the way, I could choose to go uh, find a fac and look them up and see if we found them all. There's definitely a little mini flag hidden away up there that I can't figure out how to get to. Is it up above? Like, it should be straight ahead here. Well, we'll have to keep our eye out for it. I'll try not to finish the level without finding it. Oh, 
Okay. That yeah, worked out all right. Well, there's an enemy up there, and that's where the dang, uh... So I still don't know how to get there, but it's clearly over there. Maybe the level isn't quite as done as we thought, and we double around over here at some point. I don't think it ends here, because we have a whole major flag left to find. Well, I'll tell you what, that guy's flinging spells uh, with a mighty, mighty energy uh, at some kind of... or. One of my uh, allies is over there swinging whoppets with a mighty energy at some metal. Because I'm hearing lots of clangs and not seeing anyone's health getting depleted. But uh, when we come back next time, we will continue on in this little mini level. And um, I'm glad we came because we got a dragon bane essence. But I'd, hopefully we can find all the flags. Since I do feel compelled to find those. And wrap this up in one trip so I'm not making returns. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.